the way he would roll the ink onto the ink ball. By turning and rocking it and rolling it onto the ink ball. So as we know, the Gutenberg was the first rock and roller. <laughs> now he used two ink balls because that would speed up the process of inking. So he has to rub the ink balls together so that they're both exactly the same. We've got to get the ink perfectly smooth over the whole surface of the ink ball. Same thickness and evenly distributed. So rolling up the ball to take a little practice and a little skill and also a little time to get it just right. Pretty smooth. Very nice. These are Gutenberg lollipops. How about a lick? <laughs> Nobody likes licorice. <laughs> okay. Now we have to come straight down with the ink balls to get the ink just on the tops of those letters. If we went like that, it'd smear off onto the edges, wouldn't fill the letters in. So coming straight down, we begin to. Did this became known as the beater. And of course, it took a little practice and skill to be this because you have to get a little ink on every letter and you can't get too much on a letter because that would just fill it in. didn't work very well with Gutenberg's oil-based ink. So he had to soften the pit problem, the tippin and the frisket. We'll open it up here. This is called the tippin. It's just leather over a frame that provides a place for us to put our paper on. These little points called duck bills position it up and down. And then the mark left and right here. Now watch this. These pins poke through the paper. And when he prints on the other side, he puts the paper back on through those same holes. And that gives him perfect alignment between the front and the back. It's still basically the same system that's used on printing presses even today. Pin register. Now the frisket comes down to hold the paper against the tympan. It's cut out there where we're going to print. It also allows us to lift that paper back up off that sticky type without smearing it or tearing it because it's damp. So now we're ready to fold the bed of the press under the platen. The next thing that happens is we pull the handle, which turns the screw and lowers the platen and presses the paper against the inky type. The person that did this was called a very exotic name, the puller. <laughs> So we're going to have some of you guys and gals be pullers. We're going to take two impressions. So let's have, why don't you come and do our first impression. Two hands up there and pull it towards you. As far as you can. can. Yeah. Make a good impression. Don't break it. <laughs> when President Lawson was here, he pulled that thing and I said, don't break it. I brought the house down here and he pulled it though. He moved the press a little bit. <laughs> okay, now notice the size of the platen is really quite small because the bigger the platen is, the more power it takes to get sufficient impression. So I just printed the one page, so we've got to roll it out and get the other page. Now, we'd like to have some of the gals do it. How about go for it? I'll fill in for you. Okay. Pull it as hard as you can. Okay. Come on. Don't make it Put That's what Gutenberg did. Well, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> it's hard. 
right? Is it? Yeah. How'd you like to do that all day long? <laughs> You'd have some arm muscles. <laughs> all right, now we're going to roll it out. Now listen quiet, and then you can hear the frisket lift that paper. This is called off a that press kiss. Did it pretty good? Wow. They did a pretty good thinking job and a pretty good pulling job.